raise the anchor, hoist the mainsail. This week we're sailing back to land for the latest update to player-owned ports. The next update we have is an expansion for ports. It's our second expansion and we've got a few new adventurers, some new voyage types, some new building upgrades, the ability to use ports outside of ports and a whole bunch of fixes and tweaks that should improve the experience for everyone. This update has three new adventurers. Uh, we've decided on their skills through a player power poll. Uh, the top three choices were agility, divination and dungeoneering. Once the skills have been decided, we had to try to come up with some characters to fit those and we ended up with a strange bunch. The characters we have are the Tengu for agility, who's a ghost hunter, a bit of a demon slayer and a, a prankster too. Uh, for divination we have the Memory, who is a coalesced colony of uh, divination wisps that has gained sentience. And for dungeoneering we have the Exile, who is a Goroho, who has some serious chips on her shoulders. We have a new voyage type with this update, which we're calling Clue Voyages. Uh, these will be for the new adventurers and a few of the old ones too. And in these you'll send the adventurers out to track down clues to find a hidden location somewhere in Wushanko. These locations will offer some new and unique benefits with imports. With this update we've also enabled players to use Terracotta in Azure to upgrade some buildings with imports. Uh, we've got the bar, the workshop, the warehouse, the shipyard, all of those things. Some of the standouts are the uh, portals, they look really good, and uh, also we finally fixed the awning outside the bar. The environment artists have done a really nice job with the uh, building interiors too, uh, really running with the Azure and Terracotta themes. In this project we got lots of amazing artwork and we looked at how many models we need to make um, and we basically uh, took the concept and then built the models from that. So one of the favourite things working on this project was modelling the Azure portal. Uh, it was a very challenging shape to interpret from the concept. It looks really cool as a piece of 2D artwork, but the challenge is translating that into 3D. And uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, quite, a, quite a tough uh, asset to model. Another interesting addition with this update is the ability to use the captain's log wherever you are in the world to send out voyages. This means you don't have to leave what you're doing in order to play some ports. You would of course still need to visit your port sometimes, but we feel that this uh, additional freedom will allow more players to engage with ports more often. We haven't just added new stuff with this update, we've also taken a look at ports as it was and asked the players some of their most common issues and bugbears. Um, we compiled a list and we've passed that off to the Ninja team to take a look at. Early last year, a forum thread was put up asking what kind of tweaks and changes you would like to see in ports. Some of the changes we've made have been things like allowing you to keep the same ship selected when you're moving between the interfaces. So say you want to make a tweak to your ship but then add an effect then come back to the ship, the same ship is selected when previously it wasn't. We've allowed you to stack your superior scrimshaws in your bank now if you haven't used them. We've made some changes to the Black Marketeer to make your life a little bit easier especially if you're colorblind. And we've added some XP bars to the crew and captains to let you see just how much XP you need to get that next level for your crew member. And of course you can't have an update to ports without some new rewards. We've added a couple of new scrimshaws for fishing. Uh, we've added the Tengu outfit as a cosmetic reward that you can collect. Uh, but most importantly we've added some tier 85 dual wield weapons for magic and for melee. And it's possibly my favourite part of the update because who wouldn't want some dual wield katanas? With the wide range of changes and additions we've made with this update, there are plenty of reasons for players to return to port. But if you're one of those players who's yet to engage, the ability to use the captain's log outside of ports is really freeing and we hope that you'll join everybody else. We'll be back next week to take a look at the biggest updates coming to RuneScape this February.